How do you choose the right liveaboard? Well, I'll tell you how I did it. Tony Pupo and welcome to Epic Liveaboard. This series is about my journey as I moved from living in a condo in Winter Park, Florida to finally living aboard a boat in uh, Palm Coast, Florida. Uh, this was something I dreamed about doing my entire life. So uh, I thought to myself, imagine what it would be like waking up in the morning on the water being able to see sunrise, if that's what I wanted to do, and get up that early. Uh, imagine being able to go to sleep at night, uh, being rocked by the waves or the wakes, uh, in this case, at the marina that I'm at. It, uh, that, to me, uh, is an incredible life. And this is something most people talk about doing. We all dream, well, someday when I retire, this is going to be what I do. But I'm at a point where I thought, well, what if things don't work out for me? Uh, as time goes on, or really, why wait? So I decided to take the leap uh, now and begin enjoying this life every day rather than waiting 10 years or so to, to take that jump. So what I'll do is I'll chat with you a little bit about um, my initial journey to get to today, uh, and then we can kind of experience things together from this point on. But I started looking for a boat, uh, which I thought would be a great live aboard about a year ago. And I have to tell you, if you haven't started looking yet, uh, if this is something you're thinking about doing, give yourself plenty of time, do your research, uh, be very, very patient. Uh, I had friends that were assisting me in the process and going with me to look at things objectively so I can get their opinions. And uh, there were a couple of times I almost walked away completely from the process because uh, it can be uh, frustrating at times. But eventually uh, I got to this point. So what I found was a 1994 44-foot Sea Ray Sundancer. And the boat is uh, has twin Cummings diesels. It's 13 feet 11 inches wide, which is huge uh, for a boat this size, so there's plenty of room. Uh, sea Ray is a boat that I'm familiar with. I've had uh, three cruisers uh, from Sea Ray prior to this one, so I know about the storage, I know about the quality, and I think it's a, the Sundancer is kind of a sexy boat. It's got um, a, a sporty look to it still. Uh, but yet it still has all of the amenities that you want uh, for living aboard. Now, leading up to finding this boat, uh, we looked at boats all over the state of Florida and including South Georgia. I felt like I was obsessively online every day trying to see what new uh, items came in the market. And of course I flip-flopped back and forth because I knew I wanted the Sundancer, but I did look at some other models thinking, well, at least it'll give me experience and I can know for sure that's not what I want. Or uh, maybe, you know, maybe I'll find one that's so clean and, and perfect that I'll decide to go with, with that model instead. But what I found is there's a few things that uh, I would recommend if you're just starting this journey that you do. And the first is go to boat shows, uh, find the model that you're most comfortable with, or at least the style. So there's a lot of people that make very similar models of boats, but you'll know, do I want a bridge boat? Do I want a trawler? You know, what exactly am I looking to uh, accomplish with the boat that, uh, that I'm gonna wind up with? Uh, the second thing is find a good broker. I did all of this on my own. I went through brokers that were representing the seller, but what I learned by the end of this journey is I really could have uh, partnered with a broker, had them preview a lot of the boats for me, which would have saved me a ton of time and uh, and some aggravation <laughs> uh, because, you know, things that are in ads and pictures and so on aren't really always what they appear to be by the time you drive an hour, two hours, four hours to get there to look at it. 
Uh, and then lastly, where I got really, really lucky is I teamed up with a surveyor. His name is Ed Rowe of Ed Rowe and Associates out of uh, Delray Beach, Florida. And this man was recommended to me by several brokers that I met along the way. And they said, geez, he's somebody that's very, very careful as he goes through and looks at your boat. He looks at all the details. He checks for moisture in the hulls. Uh, he checks for engine quality. And then he also would recommend based on the area that um, where the boat's located, he'd recommend a mechanic that would come in and do an engine survey. And that would be based on you know, the type of engines you got. So sometimes I looked at Caterpillar engines, sometimes I looked at Cummins, sometimes I looked at Detroit diesels, and you want somebody that really specializes in that engine type. Generally, they're passionate about it. If somebody really is working with Detroit's all the time, they have a passion for Detroit's, so they can tell you, here's what we're gonna be looking for, here's a problem with this one, the maintenance wasn't done, whatever it is you find. But with Ed Rowe, I felt very, very fortunate because he helped me to look at each boat objectively and he found some potential catastrophes uh, that he told me to walk away from because within a year or so he thought there was going to be major problems with the hull of, of, uh, of these particular boats. Uh, what I'd like to do now is uh, take you around this boat and you can see why I, I purchased it. Uh, the gentleman I purchased it from was actually retired military and really one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. Very, very, very meticulous, very detail-oriented. I wound up going to the marina where he kept the boat and spoke to the mechanics there and they spoke very highly of him and said that he managed this boat with an open checkbook. If they recommended something be fixed, he would just tell them to move forward and, and take care of it. And one of the things that I learned to look for is the people that are so meticulous that they kept accurate records. This gentleman had receipts from every single expense that he incurred during his lifetime with this boat. So I got to see every single wash, which I didn't necessarily need those receipts, but it was interesting to look at it. He had the boat washed every month, and uh, but then also every oil change, when the zincs were changed, any major repairs that were done. Uh, so it was, it, I think that's really what we all should be looking for, is someone that's that meticulous. Now they're hard to find, but like I said, if you're not in a hurry and you can take your time, the outcome will be better for you because you'll find that the end result is that you want to wind up with something that is not only the style you want and not only as beautiful as you want in, uh, as far as the interior is concerned because that a lot of times is what gets us all excited, but that it's mechanically sound and that the air conditioners have been taken care of and, and so on so that you'll have the least amount of problems with, uh, with the vessel that you wind up with. So I feel very, very fortunate to have found this particular boat. So this is the boat from the starboard side. Uh, as you can see, and this is something we'll chat about a little bit later, but uh, this marina has floating docks, which make it very easy to tie off to. You don't have to worry about the rising tides and so on because the, the docks move with you. So it allows me, especially in a marina like this, where we do get some wakes every so often, to uh, keep the boat off of the dock. Uh, I still have the fenders out just in case, but it's a really good way to make sure the boat's preserved and protected. Okay, well this is a shot of Veni Vidi Vici from the port side. Uh, as I mentioned before, one of the things that I really like about this boat is the fact that um, this gentleman that owned it prior to me really cared about the details so we had the windshield area covered and most of the cockpit and then also the camper top and what that did was it allowed the original uh, vinyl that's on all the seats to stay intact I mean it looks brand new so obviously he took care of that on a regular basis uh, he put covers on all of the uh, the hatches on top of the boat. He covers the windlass. I mean, it's really amazing the amount of money and time this man spent to make sure this boat uh, stayed preserved for a long time. 
I love this style. I think it looks sporty, even though it's an older boat. Uh, it, as you can see, it has a very long bow, which was probably the biggest adjustment for me. Uh, the largest uh, boat that I had prior to this was 38 feet. So this boat is actually seven to eight feet longer because they measured these a little bit differently uh, in 94. So it's just, I have to be extra careful when I'm making a turn in the marina to ensure that my uh, bow pulpit does not, uh, you know, <laughs> come into contact with any other boat or piling, uh, things like that. But it really didn't take that long to get used to it. Okay, so here is the stern of the boat. As you can see, it's a continuation of the camper top. Over to the left, I've got a Magnum grill that is covered and I've attached it with the uh, fishing pole holder. The, uh, this boat was ordered with the extra swim platform, which I'm really looking forward to using. It's almost at water level, so when you're sitting out at the inlet, um, it's, it's just perfect. It keeps you nice and cool just to sit on it. And also you'll notice there's two hooks there for uh, the dinghy, uh, which I haven't purchased yet, but that will be my, my next purchase. Uh, now to the name of the boat. So names of boats are very personal. And uh, I decided to name mine Veni Vidi Vici, which is Latin. It's a term that Caesar used, which means I came, I saw, I conquered, which I think is a very strong name. That said, the real reason why I chose this name is because when I was a child, my grandfather and my father used to sing this Italian song to us, Veni Vidi Vici, which was about a romantic interlude uh, between a man that was uh, trying to romance a young lady. And I always thought it was a very fun song and it reminds me of my childhood. And like all boat names, um, that gives it a good story because no matter what the name of the boat is, you're always asked when you're at marinas. Well, that concludes today's episode. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you found it to be useful, please click like. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we have a lot of other fun and interesting things coming up that we can't wait to share with you. Uh, in the meantime, uh, live an incredible life. I'll see you soon. Bye. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Uh, tell me what kind of liveaboard you think would be perfect for you and whether or not you've already started looking. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.